I've definitely had Phoenix the last season and the season before. Um, but uh, I mean, if you want to be the top of the game, you cannot show these niggles because I, I'm going to get these niggles. And uh, if you want to be at the top, you have to accept these niggles before you even go on court and you need to manage them, which I have been doing. Uh, luckily enough, I have been lucky with my body. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've been al I've always invested in my body, to be honest. I've always uh, I've always had at least three physio sessions every week during training. Uh, I, I knew that if I want to challenge history, and I want to challenge the world number one history. I want to challenge the titles. The most important thing is actually investing in my body rather than investing in my squash, you know, because what's the point of being the best squash player in the world if my body is not all right? So I approach this period a bit different, to be honest. Uh, I have actually done nothing for the, the first three months. I did not even go for one running session, actually. And uh, it was all calculated and it was all done for a purpose. Uh, first of all, obviously to remove the niggles. And second, I wanted to lose muscles. Uh, I, um, I'm i getting older and I need to change things. If I want to stay at the top, you always need to change uh, to stay there. Um, uh, I feel like the generation I'm playing with right now are definitely leaner than me. Um, maybe I'm, I could be stronger than others in some aspects, but, um, but as you get older, you need to be lighter. And uh, I need to change muscles and I wanted to reinvent myself from the beginning and put muscles into the right areas. Um, like... Um, for example, uh, how you lunge, how you're sometimes your quad dominant, how your hamstring dominant. So uh, I, you try to get the glutes involved, for example. And to do that, uh, I needed to work on my glutes last season, the, the past few years, but my quads were too strong because of the work I have done since I was 15, you know? And so I wanted to lose muscle there uh, and I decided not to do anything and to lose complete muscle. And then when I start to work, uh, to reinvent myself. Uh, I watch a lot of videos of Djokovic and Federer and Nadal when they were out for six months. And uh, the one thing that the three of them said when they were out, how they reinvented themselves. And each one of them did it differently. And um, I had to think so hard how I can reinvent myself differently as well and, and my way. Um, so I took the first three months off. Uh, I, I was much, I was, believe me, I, maybe I look thinner right now than how I was before the last season, uh, but I was even thinner in those three months because I had no muscles whatsoever. It's like in boxing, you know, uh, you have a heavy weight and a light weight. Um, and uh, let's say the way I beat Ali, for example, in Canary Wharf, I could not walk out of court after this match. And you saw that, you know, and. Uh, and I can't do that forever. So I felt like, you know, Ali is much lighter than me. He's much leaner than me, but at the same time, he's very strong. So how I can do something similar and try to be to go to the category of the lightweights with him, but stay strong. So um, so I completely changed my training, changed my diet, changed the way I train. And uh, and yeah, I don't know if it will work. I don't know if it was the clever or the right thing to do, I guess. Everything you're gonna choose to do, there is risk involved, and but you have to believe in what you do and go with your gut feeling, and just go with it. And I've been doing that all my career so far; it's been working. And let's see if it will work this season. Uh, it's all of the message to uh, give across to everyone else on uh, everyone else on tour uh, uh, to show uh, that you're here to stay. Uh, I've came every season, showing, trying to show that I'm here to stay, even even if. I want to win this tournament. It's always important to show the player that if someone is going to take that world number one from me, they're not going to do it the easy way. They'll have to work really, really hard. And it's important for me that if someone take it from me to do it the hard way, because if they did it the hard way, that means that they showed weaknesses out of me. And I need them to show weaknesses out of me so I can improve as a player myself. I have no doubt that Ali is going to come back. I have no doubt that Tariq will come back. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just... Uh, Knowing these players, you know, they will all go through ups and downs, but at the end of the day, the top players find a way to stay at the top. Uh, the one is really, really interested for uh, that. I'm re the two players that I'm really, really interested to still watch this season is definitely Diego. I, knew, I, I know he had a squash court in his house during lockdown in Canada, so it will be pretty interesting to see the things he worked on, how fit he became, because I have no doubt he had the talent to challenge the top guy at the top level. And I have no doubt that he had the ability to be world number one one day, if I'm honest with you. Um, and the other guys I'm really interested to watch is Asal, definitely. I know myself as uh, when I was world junior champion myself and I went on tour and I surprised everyone and beat everyone. And Asal did that last season and it will be interesting what he does this season because all the top guys have watched him now. All the top guys would have figured him out. And uh, I had a, had a patch where my first season was surprised everyone. And then 
the next few years I couldn't really beat them anymore because they figured me out and I had to work more on myself I needed to get better so it would be interesting to see what Asal does because I'm 100% sure not just me but all the top guys would have watched him studied him and figured him out uh, and it would be up to him to come back and work I mean, I'm, I mean, we haven't played him yet. I've never played him, to be honest. But I've just played him in training a few times in here, and he's such a nice guy, a nice boy. I really like him as a kid, always willing to improve. And definitely, he had the character to be world number one one day. And I think when we're all gone at some point, uh, he will be the one that leads the sport at some point. I think if 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 he keeps the right attitude in training, um, it's one thing to have the talent, and another to get there. You know. Uh, so yeah, these are the two most interesting players for me, and uh, obviously, the other people that I've, I think they're coming, and I think they're coming strong. They're French. I think there's a very big group of French players that are all around the 22 years old. Uh, I saw my brother playing one of them in the first round. I was really, really impressed by him, actually. Uh, and there is a lot of them actually right now. Uh, Victor. Um, but uh, they're all around the same age, and I really think they remind me of the Egyptians when they were all the same age, the same generation coming together, we were, and then we all ruled the sport at some point. Uh, I think they're coming, I think they're coming strong, and uh, I think if the Egyptians don't do something about it soon, they'll take over from us very soon, I think.